we'll have this discussion. Discussion? What discussion? This is a discussion. Coming to you from Denver, Colorado. This is Discussion Combustion Podcast with your hosts, Kevin Batstone and Arthur Raw. We're so excited to start this one off. We've got a classic guest in the house tonight, super classic guest, and that man is the myth, the legend, Jamie Rourke. What's up, guys? He's back again. Good Here to we see are. you, man. Here we are. You know, we were telling our viewers before we went on that originally this was going to be a solo for Christmas, so obviously everyone tuning in, hope everyone's having a tremendous uh, holiday season. Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Christmas. Hope everyone's enjoying being safe out there. And if you're in the Denver area, it's cold as a witch's tit, as some say, or it's cold as a shady uh, tin toilet seat on the shady side of an iceberg, something like that. Right. I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with the death threats that I've been sending in. No, I mean, I don't think it has anything to do with that. But the fact remains, Jamie hasn't been here since last spring. He's back. It's good to see you, brother. It's good to see you guys. It's always good to see you guys. So excited. So excited. And honestly, um, I love drinking whiskey with you. So mm. on that note, welcome we welcome back, Jamie Rourke. You you are a champion of the people. I don't think anybody's like drinking whiskey more than me. Yeah, you're Cheers, definitely guys. a whiskey connoisseur, and thanks, Bud Light, Cheers. for your continued support of this program. Um, yeah, man, great to have you back. We have a, this poinsettia that's dying on the table, um, trying to feel a little festive. I got the sweater. I wore, look, Jamie, you and I are rocking the sweaters. Art, what are you doing? I am forgetting to wear Christmas decor. Oh, well, look at that. Can we get that on camera? Yeah. No, no look this way. <laughs> yes, his snowman has a carrot boner, and <laughs> you should boner. you should be so uh, flattered and admired that it's happening. I think it's going to stretch That's significantly. That's how excited my shirt is to be here. With as cold as it is outside, Jamie, I don't think that thing is going to sustain. Well, that's You're going to have a shri- shriveled carrot in any minute now. Well, I'm not walking with that. Outside. Absolutely not. It's just too damn cold. And I'm, even, a, I'm a little jealous of the snowman, to be honest with you. Are you? Yeah. I mean, he's a solid lad. I know. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, no, of course you are. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, you've been working out in this shit, dude. You were telling me when you were driving down the studio, it dropped like 45 degrees yeah, in like went three from minutes. like 51 degrees at like 1 in the afternoon to like literally by 2.30, we felt it. We were doing a walk of the project, and boom, the wind came up and it was like, cold to sit you like like 20 degrees in like five minutes literally so it, what you're telling me is you're when this episode as our viewers are tuning in you're not working today no i work today no no but when this drops it's gonna drop on thursday oh, yeah, 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 yeah i'm not working today so yeah as everyone's you know comfort up around their their nice warm fire um yeah you're not working just because it's too damn cold a lot, a lot of businesses are not going when are you guys going live right now no it's not what? live this goes no on no we're not so, so we will have a live showing um, in January at a very poppin' uh, location in Denver. I'm, I'm not going to disclose the location well, yet. You've, you've already but, teased a lot. We haven't even talked about this but yet. No, no. So this is the tease. Okay. Discussion right. combustion. No, I have we'll to have say a live because event. I have yes, to say because I say this every time I come out. I was like, I remember when you guys called me and said, hey, we're going to do this podcast thing. And you guys did it on your cell phones. So now here you guys are. But it's not live. It's not live yet. That's the next step. You mean, oh, you see, like, broadcast it live? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's really not a huge benefit to doing it that way. But what there is and what Art's kind of teasing on a little bit and what we have in the works right now for, we won't mention the location or the no who location we're working yet. with, yeah. um, is doing it in a live setting with an audience. So that's that's where the podcast industry is headed. So you don't want to say anything because Elvis still is alive, huh? <laughs> well, no, I mean, just... <laughs> in yeah. everybody's heart, yeah. he is. Yeah. And, and, until contracts are signed, things are official, we just can't talk about it. But... The good news is that there is big things coming in the live market here in January, February. So stay tuned for that for sure. Mm-hmm. But man, dialing it back, February of 2019, we started this project, right? We uh, every time you've been on, we've talked about the history, so we can kind of breeze through it a little bit. But we're literally coming up on a four-year anniversary, really, of, of this project. And and joining your basement, I think it was April or May of t- 2019, somewhere in there. I- I couldn't tell you. Because, I, I mean, we were we were balls deep in the Ridge Runners at the time. Right. You know, working with some amazing musicians. And uh, shout out to, of course, Screaming Pete, who's been on this program a few times. We had, we had the pleasure Screamin of Pete. working with him. And, and Sin on Six is doing tremendous. I'm super happy for you guys. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we were just trying to create, man. I mean, that's that's really what this everyone at this table so brings if, it back to. If we're going to do the same thing that we always do, then you already know, Jamie, that I have to thank you. Uh Jesus. If it if it wasn't <laughs> if it wasn't for you, so this Christmas season that's not true. I keep every time I say this, it's not true. This holiday season, I am grateful for you, oh. because if you didn't give us 
the space, an opportunity. If you didn't love us like brothers, like Ken folk, then Ken folk, like Ken folk, then it wouldn't be where it's at right now. It well, just, it just wouldn't, Jamie. That's so not so true because you, you are. I didn't even know this was happening until you guys did it. You're one of the good. biggest contributing factors to Kevin and I's success. We've been saying that for four years. I don't think it's true, but thank you. Why is it not true? Why, why, why do you beg to differ? We were already there. We had the band there. There was two bands playing there. Two bands there and then a podcast. All you set up was a table, and you were doing your thing. Yeah, but you had to sacrifice your Wednesday nights doing You cook. could do the same thing in your apartment. Yeah, I'm not doing and that. And you guys would have done that anyway. We would have found a way, but we had an opportunity to have a, a sustained location with, you know. I know the rent was cheap. Rent was like, cheap, yeah. but we had enough, I mean, the space. We had enough space to build a studio there. So, I mean, for folks that are new to this program, if you go back anywhere before episode 92 and watch any of that on YouTube, you can see the old studio and, and just the memories and the moments and experiences that we had it's, down there. It's in Jamie's place. I mean, look, man, you allowed us to bring strangers into your house every single Wednesday. You opened up the space to us. We got to use the bathroom. You would even feed me meals like it's true. you are fuel behind the fire brother yeah, the the fried potatoes yeah good shit yeah i mean because you better know than fried potatoes and onions uh i love fried potatoes the shepherd's pie oh yeah, um, yeah. Well, all, all the things all the delicious hamburger things. hot dish yeah hamburger a little hot bit dish. of goulash the goulash yeah, there you go yeah yeah uh let's yeah. see what else uh nifla nifla well i mean i don't know if we ever made nifla on a do you remember oh, the first time that I made Nifla in Quincy Ridge and it I was know, a complete you, disaster? Yeah, you wore your what is beer Nifla? belt. What it's is like that? A, it's like a German dumpling, I guess. It's, it's good. Well, it's like it's, the size of your thumb. These things are like the size of your thumb. And it's just basic dough. It's like egg, milk, salt. Um, it's good. Yeah, you just make a dough mm. and you boil it. And then you you saute some onions and then you cover it with heavy whipping cream and you put it in the oven. Mm. It's like the poorest people food ever. Yeah, it's not good for you, but it tastes really good. And yeah. we tried to make it, and that's when I had the beer belt. Do you remember that? Beer belt. I think was, I, I have pictures of it. Yeah, I, I had I six beers pictures. right around the belt, ready to go for this operation. That was a ridge thing, though. That happened in the ridge. Yeah. yeah that's what I'm saying. How come yeah. I never Pre- saw the beer belt, Kev? Well, maybe you should have been around. What was I doing? Who knows? You probably didn't remember. I was definitely <laughs> twacked out of my mind at I mean, that point in, in my life, for sure. <laughs> I mean, we, Jamie, I was looking at... Uh, we had a memory pop up where you and I wrote "Whisper in the Dark" with the original. That was 2014. In your, that was like the mural was already painted over on your wall, the, oh, yeah, the yeah, Zach yeah, Wild yeah. mural. So like you were moving right, out. Yeah. I, I got remember my you house got your house at Christmas. Yeah, I got my house. Yeah. So you're at like your eight, eight year anniversary at your house, mm-hmm. which is crazy. That was eight years ago. We wrote this track, but in any case, that was at the time where it was it was you, it was me, it was Mark Trimble, um, just fucking off each weekend. Well, this the the funny thing is when I watched that, that wasn't a live shot when we were playing that wasn't us actually the audio wasn't us actually so, playing yeah mark figured out a how way to make to that edit it perfect because there was like a video setting on presonus yep which is where we started so, yeah. so one thing i got to say now since we're on it i want to talk a little shit all right because we got we got all the boys in here well not all of them but we got we got family in here so mark was good at editing yes no one's going to deny that. He, for a little bit of time, if you I know die, if you die I know back, <laughs> if Mark, you, Mark's getting thrown on the bus right now. Take it away. <laughs> if, if you dive back deep into the discussion combustion files, when we were audio only, there was a th- three episode run where no, Mar- there was it was more than that. Was it only? No, it was more. It was more. I so want to say it was summer. You, you take it. Yeah, no, I, I'm not trying to cut you short. No, go, go, you, go. you bring up it a lot of. It was just audio only. When we were audio only, right. Mark stepped in and he said, hey, guys, I need a project. I want to produce the show. And you remember this. He would come over for a visit. And I want to say it was somewhere around because you, your brother was on 007. Okay. Think, thinking back, I, you know, dates, numbers. I got a weird memory for the it. The douche. The douche. The douche. The douche. He's a solid lad. Mark stepped in around episode eight and he produced from like eight to 13. And Mark got pretty drunk on that episode. And that was the last time that. <laughs> he was ever around. Yes, yeah, so, on, on DCP. So what I was saying, well, he got it's, he got he drunk was, the last time, and then like a week later, he was getting married. He's so he's I remember sober. those conversations. Oh, he's been for sober sure. for three years now. So and Mark, congratulations! Because I know yeah. Mark's going to tune into this because it's all family. We love you, brother, and congrats on your sobriety. <laughs> yes. We fucking love you. Yes, Mark, and honestly, you should have fucking stuck with us every single Wednesday. I don't know why you quit, bro. You, you could have well, probably because you were just talking all. shit about the audio. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you guys having arguments with him, though. Oh. I think there was a night where it was, like, you guys, and I think Eric was there. Oh, yeah. And Eric was trying to help that. Mark out, and Eric and Mark just lost their shit. 
Yeah, Mark between, ended yeah. up st- stomping out, and yeah. then Eric mocked him. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. It was Wait. like the old beer pong days. It was. Yeah. What, did, what did he say when he was leaving? There was an error message. Up, like, Mark got frustrated. He's like, you know what? Then you do it. And he, yeah. he stomped <laughs> up the stairs, and then Eric mocked him. and was like, fuck it, I'm leaving too. And he stomped <laughs> up the stairs, and both of them were out. So then we were on our own. Wait, Eric really left while yeah. mocking him? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, so, I mean, that's just Jesus. that's just cowboy shit. That's just good old boy shit. I mean, everybody loves each other, you know. Yeah, we're, we, we're, I mean, yeah, there's no there's no lack of stories. No, fuck If no. you think of any time period, anything we've ever, there's no lack of stories at all. That's what's great about having these kind of episodes, too, is um, it brings us back to the roots. You know, the amount of fun that we had during, I mean, you know, going back to the pre-Sona shit, dude. Remember when we would do those mock? I mean, they were almost like podcasts, but we never released them as podcasts. Well, we were playing like a, a what the hell were we doing? We like, were a like a radio station member? Yeah. We were going to, like, you know, talk about songs. You know. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't structured well. I mean, who's kidding who? There, just, was that, there was that one country song that you liked, and Mark and I were just talking shit got about Got a little it. drunk last yeah, night. Yeah, got a little drunk last. And every <laughs> song we played after, like, it, like that, that came into, like, it could have been a rap song, a hip-hop song. It could have been anything. And it was like, got a little drunk last night. It was like, we were, we were totally talking shit about your thing because you were all happy about it. I mean, look, a lot of people talk shit about me. I can handle it. Right. You know, but I, what, what I remember about doing that series with you, me, and Mark sitting down and doing, like, song reviews, and then we would throw in our makeshift commercials. Oh, yeah, that yeah, That was yeah. what was really fun. That was classic, yeah, yeah. I mean, I still have all that stuff on a hard drive. We might have to release some of that on, like, a DCPC Patreon or something for some bonus content. I mean, let's send it. In the, in, in, in the old files, man, because yeah. there's so much stuff that we have recorded that we've forgotten about. I still have the hard drive of all the stuff that we recorded from day one. Um, I don't have the – that's a lie. From day one, I had, like, this little personal computer, like a little laptop that I don't even have anymore, that the hard drive wouldn't handle what we wanted to do. So we shit can that. that. And then Mark brought his computer over. That's right. And that's when we got really serious. So, like, the very first stuff that we uh, – like, beer buddy stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. I we th- The only reason we still – yeah, the only reason we still have that song is because you made the YouTube video. Yeah, and so, are in that music video. Yeah, so, there's so, no, I, I there's just, no hard drive. I, I just, I just have to do a quick disclosure here for any listeners. Look, if this is your first time listening to Jamie motherfucking Rourke. All right, he's a long time friend, brother, comrade, but also Kevin and Jamie have produced a lot of music together. They used to have a band called the Ridge Runners, which still has awesome content on YouTube. If anyone wants to check that out. And so there's a lot of history here. So just in case if someone's tuning in for the first time, I, I had to lay that that groundwork. We appreciate appreciate that. that art for sure. Yeah, that is probably good because we just kind of jumped in. Like, I mean, this is what we do, guys. I mean, off camera, on camera. This is just kind of how we've always rolled for. for well, 15 we're just years. buddies. We're just bullshitting. So, yeah. I mean, what, beer buddies. Beer buddies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go on YouTube what, and what, look at beer buddies. Yeah, I would recommend. Remember how uh, upset Mark was when? Oh, when uh, uh, yeah, but that was a great. What song. was that guy's name? Dylan Scott. Yeah, Dylan, which is a good song. But he was looking for beer, but he's like, this guy stole our song. And Mark was like, <laughs> Mark was pissed. And dude. I mean, when Mark drank, Mark was really funny. And he took things like really personal. Yes. He's like, we're going to sue this guy. I'm pretty sure Mark, his song was out before ours. <laughs> yeah, and it was okay. way better produced. Yeah, and, way, and, it was a way better song. I, I mean, mean, Beer Buddies was not a good song, yeah. if we're being honest. Like, beer, beer Buddies was an amazing song, excuse you. And it was also just completely organic. I mean, it couldn't be that great of a song. Beer, I was, the, yeah, I was the beer. vocalist. There's my vocal. Yeah, but there's, dude, that's, that's, that's my. Were, you were on an it's edible. It's stuck then, in my head. Though. But it's stuck it in my head, Jamie. Yeah. The song is is forever old, and like it's still like your voice. Beer. I was sitting beer. on the couch. Yeah, it's stuck in my head. I it's an amazing song. Yeah, man. I don't do the whole marijuana thing. I was sitting on the couch and I was staring at TV, and we were recording. And I just, you guys, you and Mark started doing this thing, and I just, beer buddies well, came out. Well, here's where, I mean, when we really dial it back to when I, when I got that Fender guitar, you were with me when I bought that, before my Martin, right? My first guitar was so excited. You were teaching me, you know, some cowboy chords and just traditional chords, and I'm like, check this out. And I, literally the whole beer buddies track is just E and A. I have pictures and a touch of that. Of, night, and a yeah. touch of C. There, we do hit on <laughs> just C. Just a little bit of C Just a there. little touch of C. Well, you got to have a breakdown every once in a while. But, I mean, it was, it was a... Uh, not a great, uh, you know, rhythmic song, so to speak, but it was the palm muting that makes it fun. I thought, right? it, I thought it was the bass solo. I mean, I also played bass yeah. on that, you know. Actually, no, maybe you did. 
I, I played bass on it was Whisper Jamie, in the Dark. If, he, if Jamie I, it complimented it, it was totally it, Jamie it, it who was, played it. It was me. I mean, my bass, my bass <laughs> yeah. on Whisper in the Dark was Because I was the bass buddy. Bass buddy on there was like you? a buddy song. Yeah. There's not many songs that have like a bass solo. We did oh, a yeah. bass solo. No, you're right. No, you are right. You're right. I played bass on Whisper in the Dark, which wasn't that good either. I can't remember what I said. I was like, thank you, bass buddy, or get it done, bass buddy, or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. The fact remains <laughs> is Studio 469, right? Where production for us all really started. Man, we had so much fun. There's yeah, it was Studio 469 Jefferson Productions. We had so many names. We were so excited. You know, dude, we remember going to Office fuck, or like Office Depot or Office Max or something like that and getting a bunch of like yellow like legal pads and like paper clips and everything because we thought we were like a legit studio. We had that little table set up in the corner. We of the were apartment. legit too, Jamie. Yeah. And we got went we went and got vanilla folders so we could put all, all of our lyrics in like certain we were like, Oh yeah, we're big time now. Yeah, we're yeah, we were in, we were on top of the fucking planet. Yeah. I mean, according to us we were. Yeah. And our three fans. No, but here's the thing, okay? So, I so there was four. that's self belief. Uh, it's it's self belief, right? Like when you actually believe that you are something, like it becomes true. You have to dive deep into your own belief of self-preservation and, like, self-success. Like, who cares what anyone else says? Who cares what the fucking what, – what the norm is out there? Like, Jamie, you're one of the best guitar players I've ever met. You're one of the best freestyle guitar players I've ever met, bro. And the way that you crush it on a wow. guitar, like, I honestly go, oh, oh to Whoa. it. That's, wow, it's yeah. good. I it's agree. good. Look, I so that was orgasmic. Yes, <laughs> I I'm, I love it when I'm you, in the same category as Jimmy Page, bro. When you when you start, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I have no. I mean, when, I mean, when you start, the soloing, clown is going to get a hard on. All right, like, yeah, do mean, it or the, the snowman, you know, the snowman. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I sat next to this man for years writing songs as you know rhythm guitar player, and yeah, I would attest that. Yeah, yeah, but you came up with a lot of that stuff on your own. Yeah, but I, I didn't I, solo. Well, I don't I'll consider myself so late Look, either. look, even when you're casually playing the guitar, um, yeah. Even see, when you're casually playing see, the guitar, Arthur Jamie, and I always do this to each because the only reason he's doing this to me right now is because. Don't, don't look at Kevin every, while every, you say every, this. Every, no, because I'm looking because. No, you look at me while you say so this. So I'm going to look at you and I'm going to go. It's because every time I come over here, I stare at your eyes and go, yes. God, what gorgeous blue eyes. Yes, yes. I mean, and, and, and I just look at your hands and I'm like, God, those hands know how to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I, I understand where this is going now. Well, I mean, when I think of 469, there's a couple memories that stick out. And I don't know if we told this. I mean, you've been on so many times, we probably have covered this. But I remember the bacon night on the Weber. Oh, Mark and I, again, Mark keeps coming up. We haven't talked about many Mark stories. We've been kind of throwing Mark under the bus a little bit tonight. Well, I think I think it's people okay. I think people it, remember need to remember where Mark really came from, and Mark is doing really well right now. Mark is a super solid legend. Yeah, I mean, Mark is pretty much double S double L as they I call mean, it. I mean, dude, we would get so hammered playing uh, beer pong, which was legendary every weekend from I'm retired. Like Thursday through Sunday. It was beer pong. Yeah, and then right. sometimes even Tuesday. Right. So when we get hammered, remember we were like, who can like jump up and hit their forehead on the ceiling? Oh, Mark did take and that. Mark <laughs> Do actually remember did. It. Were you there for that? I was there Mark for that. Actually yeah. made it ha- and he looked like he looked. Why like were a, we doing that? I don't know because we were drunk. Mark <laughs> looked like a dolphin <laughs> jumping up. Yeah, he, he was like. I mean, his arms were all straight. He was like. <laughs> he looked I mean, like Rob yeah. Schneider in the animal. And he had he like the white away. stuff on his forehead and everything. Yeah, and he was a little scratched up. He literally hit the ceiling with his forehead. Wait, oh wait, God. how uh, was it like a nine foot ceiling? Like how high did it Mark? Was the, it was his apartment. Yeah, my how apartment. high did eight Mark? Foot? Foot? Like this, that has to be eight, nine foot. Yeah, nine. It's got to be it eight nine. foot. It's got to be eight. No, foot it's got to be more than that because I, I mean I'm I'm coming at six. I couldn't hit it, and I'm taller than Mark. Well, yeah, but you were always way more drunk than Mark. You could barely run. Well, I wear cowboy boots, Jamie. And again, you wear cowboy boots. And that's the, that's not the shoes. I don't you wear, wear the epic, you know, get hops. The, the, the hop shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't pump up fucking cowboy boots. No, you don't pump them up. But I I'll tell you I don't what. know, dude. If you could, if you could rock cowboy boots year round like Kevin does, and then you put on some fucking sneakers, all of a when sudden. When have you ever seen Kevin with sneakers? Oh, it happens. It happens. All, maybe all, all of a sudden, bro. This dude is going to be walking faster than than Bolt Hussein. How do you walk fast? I think when you did that. Moves? I think it's Usain Bolt. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but I, that's I'm a dyslexic. Nice well, yeah, you got to do the Kev walk, of course. So, out of 365 days of the year, I wear sneakers three of those days. For what? 
I mean, sometimes I'm feeling frisky. Like when we went up to Bandamere, I wore shorts, which is very unusual. And if I wear shorts, Jamie, I can't wear I can't wear cowboy boots because I look like I'm from the Bayou. When have you ever worn fucking shorts? Uh, when it's, this is all new to me. When I'm it's like, 99 and I'm at Bandamere, you were there. Oh, he, so this is he, new stuff. He, he was wearing like, no, no, he no, was no. wearing khaki shorts with the with the polo tucked into. He looked like a dad. <laughs> I looked like I had granola in my pants and you I was look, ready to you, lead an outdoor event. Did you event. look like Grandpa Rourke? I wouldn't say grandpa. I look I look like I could be a scout leader maybe. <laughs> That's terrible. I mean, I don't I mean, I, I've never know, seen you in shorts to be honest. Um, it's rare, like I said, 3 days out of the year. I don't even think it. I ever seen you at the pool when we lived at the ridge. Oh, dude, you want to talk about the pool memories? No, I don't want to hear about no. We because, don't need to get into Because those I feel bad for having my son swimming in that pool after listening to you guys talk. Hey, well, to be hey, fair, you're saying too much already. Stop it. <laughs> to be stop. To be fair, it was the hot tub, not the pool. Who was Whoa. Who Whoa. Was, Whoa. Who was the original guy that would watch the pool? What was his name? He was like a real buff guy. Phil he was really Marzo. Yeah, he was such a he was such a good dude. Phil Marzo's fantastic, and I've been trying to get him on the podcast for four years. Phil, we love you. Come on, man. We'll promote your stuff. What's he do? He is a life coach. I can see that because he was like, bro. Uh, he got me. He got me fired up, dude. Like he motivated me to do a lot of shit. He's a good. He's a good guy all around. Good, you know, buff guy. Um, him and I, you know, when I moved to Colorado in 07. He would motivate you. I mean, every time I saw him, we were, I was taking my kid to the pool. He's a good guy. And he would just motivate me to fall asleep. So, my, what, what were you listening you know, to? What was he saying? He was like, hey, Jamie, how's it going? He'd go, hi, Austin, you know. Phil and, Marzo? Yeah, and we'd write our names down. And he'd be like, man, it's really nice to see you guys, you know. Have a good evening. Oh, you know? him and I used to drink beers all the time at that clubhouse. And we got we got down to business. Good guy, for sure. And he still is doing amazing things. <laughs> I think one of his quotes is something I still carry with me today. Um, a Phil Marzo quote, why settle for less when more can be obtained. That is a good one. Yeah, yep. Yeah. He taught me that back in like 07, 08. <clears throat> and energize your existence is another one that, that he pumped a lot that I still remember. But good guys. I mean, look, Quincy Ridge Apartments, shout out to them. Free plug, rural Colorado, right? How, every time Jamie's on, we kind of – I just drove Quincy by there today. Quincy Chambers. I just I drove d- by there today. I drive by there every day. And every time I do, I look in there and it just – I either shake my head like, oh, fuck. or I smile. People have no idea what goes on there. Or what went hopefully, on. Hopefully it's still happening. I mean, that was a fun place. I mean, none of us would know each other. If that, 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 that's why. It's we, the roots. Yeah, yeah, that's why we became the Ridge Runners. I mean, it only made sense. But you want to talk about, the? I, I mean, again, this is terrible. You want to talk about a, dif, a dysfunctional group of people. I mean, all the planets had to align just perfectly for all of us. To come together at the same fucking time. Well, cheers for that. Yeah. Cheers for that. Yeah, that's worthy of a cheers. Thank Bring you, Bring it Mike. in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to wait for I, Jamie. I didn't know we were refilling. Go there, ahead. There, there is some whiskey here, in here, there. Here, put a little bit more on top of mine while you're at it. Whoa, okay, yes, sir. All right. Okay, well. Cheers. And once again, cheers. Cheers, cheers to meeting at the Ridge. I love you guys. Thank you, Bud Light. Appreciate I know, you guys support. were, well, except for you. All you guys were like... You have to and... sip it now. Sip it. You have to sip after you cheers. Or else it's bad luck. I've never heard that. That means you too, Kev. I just did. Did you? I didn't He's see drinking it. a Bud Light. Yeah. Okay. Sip it, Jamie. All right. Cheers to so, long friendship and cold, hard roads. Cold, hard roads, cold, long hard friendship. Cold, hard roads. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, what were you going to say about the Ridge? You had a comment to make. While I opened up, I had a really good light. It was a good one. I know for a fact it was Cut good. The camera to me, Art. Thank you, Bud Light, for your continued support of discussion combustion. <laughs> <laughs> what Jamie thinks about his answer. Now, what, what I'm, what I'm, you know, um, I want. There was something about Becky. Oh, Becky. Yeah. Oh, that Becky. The, the, you talking about the property manager? Yeah. She Miss Talon's toes. Oh, she had Talon toes. Yeah. They call those raptor claws. Yeah, raptor, raptor claws. claws. Dude, I think she was hot to trot for any young dude that moved through that comp. But she would, she would play this control thing where she had to tell you that you know your blinds are wrong, or you <laughs> that know, your what is your, wrong? <laughs> your blinds are wrong. Your blinds? Yeah, like I never your curtains. That way. You know? What do you mean your curtains are wrong? Who who was the chick that had what the hots for Mark? We're, we're talking about Mark. We should probably no no no. Wait wait wait. Here's what we're gonna uh-uh, do. If no, we have to. We're gonna change all their names. Yes, to, just to protect. No, but no. What do you mean no? Just okay. No. Who was the chick that had the hots for Jeff? Uh, so 
Um, trying no to one's going to know if we're changing the <laughs> names. Rebecca. Rebecca. No, get out of here. No, just no. <laughs> Rebecca had the hots for Mark, and that's not her real name. No. It isn't. No. I no, just no I, to I, all this. Wait, oh, for Jeff. I'm, I'm sorry. Sa- I'm saying no to all this. Who's Jeff? Okay. Mark, just remember, I'm saying no Jeff to all this your, right now. Jeff your, is your code name. Um, Guys, no. The fact remains is just that no. a lot of things happen in those those <laughs> gates, right? And that's yes. why we all are here. That's the reality of it. That's why it holds so much weight. And every time we think back on it, it's like, man, you, your brother, me, Evan, when I live with him, obviously meeting Jamie, Mark, Eric Duchesne. Well, I already said that. Uh, Craig Christofferson. You know, who else came out of there? Bill and Jan. You know, we were friends with them for a while. I haven't talked to them in a while. I mean, just incredible folks that were in there. It was like a goddamn college dorm. Well, room. I mean, my son and Mark's son, best friends. There you go. Grew and up together. Great guys. Both 21 now. And they Trey is when married. Like, Seven. Yeah. Trey's married. Trey is fucking married. Yeah. Which is incredible. That's crazy. And and honestly, kudos to both of them. Yeah, congrats Well, of course, them. but look, I'm just saying. They look great. We're Young and from, in love. We're coming from a little anorexic kid that had flies flying around his mouth, eating his mouth. my nutty mouth, eating my nutty bars, and now he's married. Nutty bars are, are honestly one of the best they fucking- They are so good. Uh, what is it? Um, guilty pleasure, dude. I honestly was thinking about nutty bars this morning. Like those, like little before breakfast, I just, I just and wanted leave the, the nutty bar in the box. Empty. I mean, yeah. That's I mean, what up. does that do? That's Did we leave it empty? Yeah, with the package in there. It's like it's like we're gonna eat it, but we're gonna stick the package in. Like maybe he won't notice that the actual fruit of the loin isn't there. Do you, do you, you have know? nutty bars in your cabinet right now? No, in your pantry. I wish. I haven't went mm. to the store. And, mm. Mm. Nutty bars are delicious. I mean, there's no getting around that. I mean, when you talk about some of your favorite snacks, is it a wafer though? It is. A, it's like a chocolate peanut butter yeah. layered wafer. It's, it's it's supreme. Okay, it's a little so, Debbie, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think it is. Yeah, I appreciate sure it's a little yeah. Debbie. I mean, mm-hmm. they make all the most unhealthy ass shit. Well, I mean, anything on that caliber is gonna be unhealthy. And I'm, just like that, we became unmonetized on this episode. <laughs> probably. I don't. I don't. Play, I, I, honestly, I'm not gonna. I'm not, I'm not gonna fuck with YouTube right now. Uh, we'll deal with that. The first of the year. Maybe, maybe you should. What's um, going on with YouTube? A bunch yeah. of assholes is what they are. Wait, whoa. Yeah. No. They're... I've reached out to your your contact support many times. <laughs> I've gotten through to you a few times. What's going on? Why are you throttling our channel? Yeah, YouTube. Why, why, why are we getting hit with, with copyright bullshit? Yeah. You guys are fucking with us. And I'm going to tell you this right now. We'll pull a Joe Rogan on you. So, YouTube, my question is, how come we haven't had comments since we got a warning? How come no one can comment on our shit? Like, what's going on with that, YouTube? I'm having a hard time trying to figure out what this show has done to offend YouTube. Well, We, we talk too real, Jamie, all right? I, I think that's part it's, of it's it. It's too real, all right? Like, we, we don't, we're not worried about what media is currently occupying their time with. We're talking about real shit. Yeah, but you can look up anything on YouTube and get it. Yeah, these guys, are, you know, look, we've been with you for... for what are we on? We're coming up on three years with YouTube. Yeah, we're a partner. Uh, we're, we're a partner. partner. Guys, we want to work with you. I don't know why you don't want to work with us. We are bringing good content your way. Might be we will act. continue to do so. Um, we just don't understand on this end what is going on. So that's all I'm going to say about that. It's all good. I yeah, respect that's, the hell that's a quick we, we I think it's do their, We don't normally do this. I think it's this. their way of saying, you know yeah. what? We don't know what to do with you, so we'll give you a bunch of line of shit right now. Until we figure out what to do with you, and then, you so know. so I'm gonna end this they on want, a positive. They want more. They want more views. That's what they want. It's all about. Money. No, they t- they take them away. They throttle our views. Yeah. So so here's the here's here's the positive spin on all this, is, in, any part of your life, if if you are getting challenged and you're working hard towards something, and you start getting challenged, like it starts not working in your favor, that that is a key indicator that you're on the right path. You have to get challenged. Things can't always just work out for the better all the time. You have to get challenged. And once you start getting challenged, that's when you know that you're actually doing the right thing. It can't be easy. Relationships, friendships, businesses, careers, regardless of what it is, it, it must be difficult. You have to hit speed bumps or else you are on the wrong path. I agree. So, so that's how I feel about YouTube. Thank you so much for creating speed bumps for us to become more successful. I appreciate you. 
Yeah, I mean, we just got to keep digging. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. We do it because we love it, of course. But when you work with these partnerships and you, and you rely on what we do here to, mm-hmm. to market so everything. So there's never been any explanation why or nope. there's just this thing going on. Yeah. And we're not the only one. I mean, you know, we, we, I don't want to harp on this too 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 much because this oh. episode is probably already demonetized. Um, <laughs> no. We're, this is, we're going to bank on this one. We got Jamie <laughs> I, I, Rourke in the building. That's true. I mean, look, if you if you go back in time and look at everything, every time Jamie's been on this program, it's, we, we've had the biggest numbers we've ever had on YouTube. Well, there's not a lot of people that have a, a shirt with s- Snowman on with Boner. Well, dude, see, the in the Snowman is, is holding his hands up. Yeah. He has a smile. That, that's but a people have to it's like the whole Chippendales. That Snowman has two Those, carrots yeah. now that I'm noticing. Yeah. People have to know that that's even a thing, though. How are they going to know unless they click the, the video? Well, you got it. I mean, unless we incorporate that in the thumbnail. There you no, go. let's put it in, in the description. You want to see a snowman get a boner? Tune in on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Um, and then everybody's going to go and look and go, really? That was dumb. But they watched. No, they're going to love it because this shit is authentic. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to segue here. I'm going to shift gears real quick. We love you, YouTube. Thank you for your continued support. We're going to keep working with you. I want to talk about Zach Wilde. We talked about it on Happy Friday a couple few weeks ago. He is stepping in as a lead guitar player for Pantera, you know, trying to fill the dime. I don't want to say fill dime's shoes because you don't really no, fill any shoes. No, he's filling it. He has to. It, but do you think that's the right way to – because I feel like it's almost like a – I don't know if he's filling his shoes or if he's doing it as like a – this is for dime. Jay, Kevin, you, you and I – stop playing with that. I, I can hear it. Kevin, you and I were in a band. If if something would have happened to you and we were this band was still good and they were coming to do it, I was like, you're going to have to fill Kevin's shoes. Has nothing to do with the guitar pro, but they have to do what you did. And Zach Wilde is never going to do what Dimebag did. He's not going to little frills or anything. He's going to make it sound really. I think that's the whole point of it, though. It's not. He's not out there to make it seem flawless. Nobody's out there to try and make people forget about Dimebag. Nobody's going to be Dimebag. Zach Wilde's not going to be Dimebag. Nobodyody's going to be. And Dime's not going to be Zach. What they're know, doing is they're around. going out there and they're honoring the music that you know. You know, Vinny and Dime did. That's that's what they're doing. Yeah, which is terrific. I mean, again, I'm excited about it. Uh, I'm going to be down at AT and T Stadium, Cowboys in Dallas, Texas, to see these guys. Pantera, Metallica. It's going to be fantastic. And I've heard good things so far with with Zach stepping in. My question is though, and I haven't really conducted a lot of research on this because I know Zach's been busy. I'm assuming he's kind of putting BLS on hold for this tour because if he's touring on a world tour with Metallica with Pantera, how is he also doing BLS? Well, the BLS thing just got over. They just did an album. What was it last year? Yeah, "Set You Free," which is yeah. honestly one of my favorite songs yeah. I think they've ever put out. Right, uh, it's a totally different sound for them. He's done with that thing. He did his whole. He's done everything he's needed to do in the last five years, yeah. five six years. So yeah, now he's like honoring his like, one of his greatest friends, and yeah, that's what he's doing. You know, well, I mean, Pantera, that's how they make money. And they I mean, a, that's his job. That's his job is to play guitar. And he, he is one it. of the great. He is known as like the encyclopedia of music. Yep. I mean, that's an yeah. epic title to. I reach. mean, literally, I remember uh, li- uh, reading an article with Dimebag and Dimebag's <laughs> girlfriend, wife, whatever she was, um, talking about how they would. Dime Big and Zach would get drunk and they would be in Dime's garage and they'd bet if Zach could play a certain song. So they'd find like, and he would like play it. So, I mean, who else would do it? I mean, there's a lot of great, but who else is going to step in? I mean, literally, think of who else is going to step in those shoes right now? Who would do it? To fill Dime's spot? Yeah. I mean, Zach makes the most sense to me. Because yeah. I mean, Pantera, a great rhythm five. player, a great lead player, just yep. a great guy. Likes. I mean, who's going to fill those shoes right now? And he's not He's not fucking drinking and doing right. drugs anymore. Right. I mean, he's, he's sober as a fox. He's dialed in, huh? Well, he's yeah. been sober for you know, long time. Wait, 10 what? plus years. I can't say the same for myself at this moment. No, not at all. Mm-mm. Well, no. no. I mean, I mean, obviously, we, everyone knows what you've overcome, of course, but the booze is still still around. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm never going to say anything bad about Zach Wilde. I mean, you guys know I'm a fucking Zach Wilde whore. I mean, they, I mean... He could like have the stinkiest fart in my restroom ever, and I'm like, you know what? You're gonna huff honor, it. yeah, honor are that you, fucking are you gonna stinky huff, fart. Are, are you yeah. gonna huff Zach Wilde's yeah. flatulence? Yeah, and there probably a tear, tear come out of my eye. You're huffing it, yeah, because I'm doing it, yeah. Interesting, yeah. I mean, I still remember <laughs> the night that we saw him on the uh, Book of Shadows tour. Yeah, and I almost teared up then. Dude, he came out and playing like, the song yeah. I wanted to hear. Yeah, I st- well, and I still have a video of us being able to kind of yeah. sold my soul, know, interact yeah. with him. That is my. My, my the favorite 
Zach Wilde song. And that came so out like 94. Yeah, yeah 94, 93, yes. So it was Pride like and Glory yeah. before... Yes. Before Book of Shadows won? Yes. Okay. And they were gonna they were gonna name that band uh, uh, Winter Skinhead or something like that, but they because of Zach's humor, right? But there was a whole bunch of racial shit, so they didn't do it. Winter Skinhead. I mean, I have nothing but respect for the man. I mean, every time we talk music, he's always in the conversation. Yeah, as as he's one. just a bad. I mean, I if mean, you're gonna join Metallica of all bands, well, he, he, Pantera. Pantera he's touring with Metallica. Oh, yeah. so yeah, yeah, he's doing the Pantera reunion thing. Okay, so obviously I can tune up on my listening skills, but um, I mean that that's epic though. That's epic. It I is. Mean, it is. Yeah. I mean Pantera too, and uh, Zach Wild is from Black Label. He started yeah. Black Label Society, okay. and obviously where he got his name in music was going on a world tour with Ozzy Osbourne at 19 years old. Yes. Yeah, that's epic. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that's a huge. I mean, like, if you're that have... good of a guitar player at 19 years old to go on a world tour and write an album with Ozzy Osbourne, oh yeah, it's pretty epic. You're, you're a badass. That is epic. Is that the guitar that you had up on the wall? Like you had the whole fucking wall painted like a mural. Yeah, the yep. whole yeah, yeah. bullseye thing. In, in in Studio 469, yeah, yellow and black the, that's bullseye. The Zach Wild thing. Yeah, yeah, he's great. He's been a great staple of music for sure. Obviously, a big influence for you. But I think what's also kind of cool with you know when we talk about our musical roots. Uh, and everyone can weigh in on this as they as they please. Is you know you're also a country guy, right? Oh, yeah, you're absolutely. not just not just fucking, you know. There, there's those nights where you and I would find our way through a thirty rack of PBR and headbang so hard to like fight Immortal or some old school Zach Wilds where my neck would hurt for three days. But then we would also do some hillbilly shit, you know, some hee haw. Um, I just ran a blank. One of the greatest guitar players I ever, the hee haw guy. Oh God, I forget his name. Terrible. I'm on camera right now. It's I'm okay, gonna... Jamie, because I often act like an idiot on this program. No, I just I just had the name and I just <laughs> forgot. Um, uh, Clark Gable or some uh, from uh, Hee Haw. Yeah, from the from the that show. That guy was, I mean, I mean, go back and look at some of his like YouTube videos. I mean, he's ripping. I mean, like shredding. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a fan of his music. Brad Paisley, not a big fan, but again, a shredder. Keith Urban, not a fan of his music, but as guitar player wise, they're good guitar players. They're all amazing guitar players. I like Brad Paisley's old stuff. I don't like his new stuff. I'm tired of Brad Paisley uh, singing a song about just like air, air or water or dude no. shoes. Or... No, no, just let him talk about the elements. You know, we, the, the elements are part of us, Jamie. Like, don't you realize that we are know, all. When somebody's singing a song we're, about water, we're all like, stardust, oh, Jamie. Water is blue and water is clean and water is cool in the summertime. You're like, oh, yeah, but we already knew this. However, for those youngins, the adolescents who don't quite understand the philosophical importance <sighs> of water, of the metaphor, Jamie, this is important art. Art. Important. <laughs> <laughs> that's true and the music industry is changing just like everything you know I really I'm excited about where country music's at right now I feel like underground country and some of like the red I'm dirt. not excited about country music whatsoever why not I think country music is like I think country music is getting into the pop charts yeah, but, but it's, it's, been, it's been it's been there for I know, a long time I, I think it, I know but while. I think it's I think it's getting like really commercialized now and I think that's what like where it's going now it's been though yeah, I mean, I know, but that's what everybody is hearing. Right. Yeah. There, there is no real country music anymore. I, I disagree with that. I just do. I mean, there's so many great guys. I mean, look. At, I know, you may have you like got to go underground. Jamie. I, know, I know you may have five guys, but wh wh who knows them other than you? I mean, a lot of people do. I mean, you look at a guy like Cody Jinks who's selling out Red Rocks twice. I mean, do you, yeah, what, but if you heard Cody James's last stuff, it's getting more and more commercial. As, well, it's getting more produced, uh, yeah, as yes. you would say. I mean, yes. you know, as as these guys get bigger, even Dirk Bentley. I mean, one of my favorite country artists of all time. It's very produced. It's very. It's very. But mainstream. he's still putting out that real content. Like he's well, like, he's not cutting. He like here's the thing. Like you get artists out there that aren't willing to fit the mold. Like they they don't want to fit the mold. You know, and and they're not willing to do that. They might be more produced. They they might allow things to happen but their content the meaning behind the music never it never fades yeah. you disagree jamie 
Well, I was going to take this whole thing. I was done sipping on it. Yeah, I mean, Dirk's new track with Billy Strings. Who Billy Strings is a tremendous, absolutely tremendous guitar player. I don't know how much time you've listened to his stuff. He's young. He's a young kid. I mean, he wrote some amazing songs. We talked about with Ryan Chris and the Rough Cuts when he was on here sure a couple who weeks ago. Uh, what Billy, was his name? Billy Strings. Billy Strings. He's a, he's a bluegrass guy, right? And we know Dirk's come from bluegrass roots. And those guys teamed up and released a song called High Note, which I know you've heard a couple times. That's what I was it. referring to. Yeah. Um, good stuff. But in the same regard, Jamie's fucking with uh, art on the audio levels here. Um, country Sorry, music, no, I, I really do. There, there's a lot of artists coming back in, and the style, I think, is is kind of shifting. I mean, you and I have had conversations. Yeah, the, the main, the Luke Bryans of the world, the, you know, all these guys, you know, not to throw anyone on their bus because, you know, give respect and respect This is why YouTube do. don't like you anymore. Because these are like the big YouTube haters right now. That's fine. That's fine. And, and, and uh, you know, I, just because I'm not a fan of the bubblegum pop country. Is Luke Bryan the guy that sings through his nose? <laughs> well, no, that sounds, like, that every, that sounds like every country guy. But, I mean, <laughs> what? Oh, Kelly, what was the name one Luke Bryan song? I think it's Luke Bryan. And country girls singing for me now. Yeah, 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 yeah. That guy, yeah. yeah Luke Bryan. He drives me absolutely bonkers. I'll tell you right now, put that camera on me, Art. If you guys haven't listened to Dude, Wheeler Walker don't Jr., don't you ever fucking tell me. <laughs> if you guys haven't listened to Wheeler Walker Jr., then you haven't. You don't even really know yourself. Wheeler That's real country. Wa- Wheeler Walker is is legit, and honestly. I love He's it. He's retiring. When, I, I love it when Kevin. Well, he tells, has to. There's nothing else he can say. What were you gonna say? I love it when Kevin tells me. Put the camera. Well, I still have John Ekstrom. Just yes. to be fair. Happy yes. Friday. Tune in that tomorrow. Um, Wheeler <laughs> Walker's guy. fantastic. This guy. This guy. No, Come on, Wa- J- Look. no, Jamie. Can you put him in his place real quick? I kind of lost. I mean, kind of went on a rant. I'm put trying me to catch in a place. Up. Why? Why? What did I do? I don't know. You're on I don't know. Walker. I, just, I, just felt, you start talking I just about like Jamie was the one to do it. Wheeler Walker's country, bro. <laughs> Wheeler Walker <laughs> is a comedian. Technically, yes. Yes. But it, you can't argue with me that the music's not good. Now, lyrics is one thing. I'm talking just musically. Let's the music is as basic as what you and I could write every day. Yeah, the but, lyrics are what makes it. It's not the music. I don't. I don't agree with that. Kevin, come on. I don't agree with that. I think it's great. We got steel guitar. We got we got we got Fender's. Uh, there has not been a single person that has listened to a Wheeler Walker song. And go, oh my God, listen to that beat. I mean, I have. <laughs> have you heard Redneck shit? Come on. I mean, that was the debut. I mean, this is professionally produced stuff here, yeah, yeah. And right? Yeah. So, so basically, the boxes that you're ticking is super simple, easy to remember. So, repeatable. I'm not saying I'm not a Wheeler Walker fan, but I know a Wheeler Walker. Remember, you and I had this conversation. I was like, "There's not going to be another Wheeler Walker album," and you said, "Yes, there was," and he put out another album. Out. Correct. And now he's retiring yeah, with because the I said I said there, he can't do anything else. He's running out of shit to say. So I mean, how filthy I mean, can you be for I know, so many years? I know. Like, what so you, what he's doing, he's playing the game right now before he gets canceled. That's so, exactly what he said. Yeah, he he's playing the game right now. He's like, oh, I don't want to get canceled. So people are going to feed in that word where they say, I don't want to get canceled. So he's going to retire. He will be back. Ozzy has had no more tours, tours for the last twenty years. That's true. I mean, you always have these guys that step away and then come back. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, look, Wheeler, he is a comedian. That's his backbone. He came from comedy, went into music, wrote some great stuff. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm not saying it's it's not country music. It is, as, though. It is country music, yes. I mean, yes, it's country music, but it's not popular country music. So, I so I'm, I'm going to segue, but kind of on the same conversation. You know, instead of talking about what is country music and all this, but, like, when you're in the entertainment industry, how we're talking about how people – retire they hang up the hat they come back right they come back like, like wheeler they, made a lot of money on what he was doing but there's there's, there's so, no there's he wasn't he wasn't he's not getting shut down there's nobody going to shut wheeler walker down no because he's not really not point. he's not saying anything wrong he's talking about sucking dick and eating pussy right no well, that was he's not record. he's not going to get shut down eating pussy and kicking ass well, All right. it's eating pussy, suck a dick, and kicking ass. Well, Correct. yeah, and the thir- and the and so the he's last not a, course. He's not offending anybody. 
He is doing – it's a publicity thing. I, I guarantee you in two years he will be back. No, but what I'm saying is that when you enter in the realm of entertainment and, and you are willing to put it on the line and you want to put your heart out there, <clears throat> excuse me, and you have fun talking about this stuff and doing these things, like that's when – like you, you can't get enough. Like you can't get enough. Like freestyling – with you, Jamie, and Kevin, you two on the guitars, Kevin coming in on some random shit. Like, I fucking love it. Like, I, I want to freestyle with the two of you. Like, I, I, I we want... We talk about this on every show. And uh, never no, no but I, I, I... No, we we do do it. It hasn't happened in a while. We've done it one time. No. You two have played guitar, and I've freestyled over it more than one time, Jamie. No, I think we have it recorded one time. Recorded, maybe. Yeah. But we yeah. definitely... We definitely it's, it's the creative spirit. Goofed off, yeah. Oh, I agree. I mean, you get guys with, with definitely different creative minds. I mean, that's why Jamie and I work so well together in the Ridge Runners and then the songs that you and I wrote. You know, when you get – you have to have the right, you know, chemistry, I feel like, and the right fit for everything, and that's what's fun. But, I mean, fuck, it, it, uh, depending on what you want to do with it. But it's addicting. It's it addicting. It's addicting like, because like, there's so many pull different yourself influences. Away from it. You yeah, can't you pull got, yourself. You get three different guys with three different influences, and you start molding that together. So, yeah, so, so you're talking I, I about mean, this creative itch, right? Yeah. And, and you want to create. You love creating. You love the, the process of creating whatever it is. Like that there is something that it's hard to pull yourself away from. Like I don't care how many of these people try to hang up their hat. They try to retire. They can't retire because the fucking – the itch is there. Well, and, the and itch they have is the there drive. and they the income is there. I mean you cannot deny that – these well, go back to Zach Wild. Why does he do all these other projects? He's got to make money. Ozzy's not making albums every year anymore, every two years. Right. He's got to go with Black Label. He's got to do this stuff. He's got to do, you know, he's got to do stuff with Morgan Wallen and what was the other Hardy, right? Hardy and you know, he's got to do all this other stuff. You know, that's their living. That's what they do for a living. No different than actors, right? Actors yeah. that fall off the wagon or, you know, get into some shit and then they're like, fuck, I got to make money again because yeah. I pissed through everything. Um, yeah, that's their sole income, of course. You know, even if they do have uh, residual royalties, right? Putting out new content is always going to bring in the money. So, I mean, for Zach, honestly, when you look at how much content he has, I don't really know if he's in a position where he has to play with Pantera to make it or has to put out another record with BLS. Well, obviously, none of us know what Zach Wilde's contract are, right? But I'm pretty sure he makes pretty good money on No Rest for the Wicked and No More Tears because those were the two big albums that Ozzy did that he was a guitar. I mean, there's got to be stuff there. There's got to be stuff Oh, 100%. There. I yeah. mean, every every album sold, every song tried I guess sold. we could all call Sharon. She would know. Because you know Sharon controls Sharon. all that shit. <laughs> Sharon's Sharon's a shysty shenanigans Aussie. Sh 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 so sheriff can we, of... Can we take a recess? A recess? Do you got to go pee-pee? Yeah, because I have a bad prostate. No, just go. Just right go. Right here? You just want me to piss on the floor? No, no, go. Oh, all right. And, and then we're going to hold it down, Kevin yeah, we'll, and I. We'll keep it running. Kevin, yes. Step in. <laughs> you want to step in, Kelly? No, Ke Kelly doesn't want to step in right now. I've so been, I've been wanting to get you on camera tonight, just so you know. What's no okay. part of it. Um, so, Kevin. So, what I'm going to tell you, though, while yes. he's gone, and mm -hmm. piggyback off that. So, Ozzy yeah. Osbourne, who we were just talking about, of course, legend. I love the Osbourne yes. show on MTV growing up. He went on record over the summer or late summer. He goes, man, I don't want to die in America. So, he. he, he I made, remember this. Yeah, he's like, I'm moving back to my native land. And he's back there. I'm pretty sure. I mean, no, I, he has to be back there. He bro. probably is, dude. Honestly, I hope he makes it to 2024, man. I mean, Ozzy's a fucking legend. I'm I hope he gonna... makes it to 2024. I think he will. He will. I think he will. I mean, when you can eat bats on stage and and taste that blood, and do all these things, man. Come on, I you mean, know you're a legend. He's definitely the, solidified the, his double rock S double role. L. Well, you remember when Black Sabbath came out? Of course, you know Jamie's not here to to defend any of this, but I mean mm -hmm. that was kind of the revolutionary piece that motivated metal music you know metallica those guys talk about hey we were motivated by black sabbath and ozzy osbourne mm -hmm, those mm -hmm. guys came out in the early 80s so um ozzy's had a, a great staple in music and and you know same with angus and you know bon scott brian johnson those guys from acdc who of course we play shot in the dark every single week before we go on the air yes. that's just become the official dcpc yes. theme song we love it we love music around these parts I mean, look, music moves the soul. So one thing that I love doing, man, and this is genuine to the maximum, 
is I play music all day. Um, so so I, I live by myself. Like, uh, you know, I'm completely alone and, and I just, I do my thing. Mm -hmm. And all day, I'm playing music all day and I'll, I'll be dancing by myself in the whip, dog, or, or in the earphones, fucking walking around, playing this music, dog, getting it in. It's so much fun. Music brings an extra it's the soundtrack flavor. To life. It, it brings flavor to life. And 100%. Like, and, and like, sometimes you need those moments. Jamie, so good to have you back. Sometimes you need those moments um, to have have everything mute, and you're just in your own thoughts. I agree. And but the importance of music can never be silenced. No, and, and I think yeah. I mean, we music is such a, a commodity that we all relate to because it's the language of the world. It's yeah, it's a soundtrack to life. It's the language of the world, and you know, even though everything's been done before, because it has. We, we mm -hmm. only, we, there's only so many notes. There's only I so know. many patterns. I, I, I know, but we're talking about music. I mean, you can go to halfway across the, the world. And, and they're beating on And two people and can shit. start talking about music and... Have a connection. Yeah, it, it's the language of the world. It's the only thing people can talk about and have a peaceful conversation about. It's amazing. Well, you two should have a connection and a conversation while I go pee. So this is the Christmas oh, so now So oh. now it's you and I. So I'm, I'm totally good to do this eyes. with you. Thank God you have those eyes. Jamie, if, if you could stop doing that, please. <laughs> Every single time I get around you, you hit on me. And over the years, it's built up this level of horniness that I have for you because you hit on me so frequently that there's I don't be, know. I don't even know what to do right now. There's got to be a reason why I would wear a shirt with a snowman on it with a boner. Only when I'm around Arthur. If you could see... Oh, wait, I, I cut to Kevin. Kevin, what, what do you think about that, Kev? Beep! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jamie. No, man, but look, I love you, man. I, I love how you... Okay, so there's so many things I could say. There's so many things I could say right now. Well, say it. I just... I, I, I love how you get down, man. I love how you don't give a fuck, and you're always willing to just say what's on your mind. Well, I, I think you do the same thing. Not to the same level, though. You remember when uh, our dear late friend... Uh, Here, pull that mic down a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Our dear late friend, uh, Matt. Matt. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I had like an inside hiccup thing. Um, and Kevin, on New Year's, got in a slapping match. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah, and Kevin got his jaw all messed up and, you know... It would, you know, it just, you know, alcohol, it got bad. Yes. We'll just say it got bad, right? It happens. You called me the next morning. You were like, Jamie, what the fuck happened? And I did I'm, call you. I remember I know, that. And I was like, why are you yelling at me? I didn't have anything to do with it. You know? Hold on. I got to fix you. There you go. I was like, I didn't have anything to do with it. That was a rough night for sure. Yeah. And I was trying to convince Kevin. I was like, oh, Kevin, it's just like being a bar fight. You're going to be sore. Well, because I heard some shit, and I was like, I was like, all right, who's the neutral party here? I'm like, all right, obviously people were involved. And I'm like, who was the neutral party? I'm like, my man, Jamie. I'm like, I need there to was, call. There was no neutral party. No, no, I had to call you, though. Well, you because, were, because it was between yeah. Matt Borb and I, RIP. I don't know if you already RIP'd him. Yes. He's no longer with us. Forever yeah, and we always. Love we, we love, love, we love, we Matt, love Borman. Matt Borman. Forever and always. And, dog, you're with us today, and you're smiling down at us while we do this. He would this. be incredibly yes. happy and, and Oh, amazed. Could you imagine that guy in this podcast? His laugh? He, he would be great. Oh he would be, be great. But I know he's... That fucking he's, laugh, dude. I have that laugh recorded. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. And I have that laugh recorded. Even is though he... <laughs> you get that, yeah, is that, it something yeah, like that? Yeah, is yeah, it is yeah. that close? Yeah, Remember Monkey Nuts? Him <laughs> I do. And Michael doing Orangutan oh, Nuts. My. Yeah, Orangutan Nuts. Yep. Yeah. No, I do. Oh. I love Matt Borman to death. Um, so so can we yeah. can we do one, actually, since... Since it's the holidays and everything, and we're talking about love, lost ones, can we? Can, here, actually, I'm gonna do some. I'm, I'm gonna do some of that to this. Do what? We, we need. We need to just have a little bit to all 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 the people who have. Uh, reached I need the my other glass. Hang, hang on, Jamie. Here I know is, you're gonna do is. one before the show and after the show. Well, nah, welcome to show business. I, I mean, this is this is the time of the year where um, we all get together and. Um, okay. That's fine. Um, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, you know, before we take this, obviously, it's a it's that time of year again. It's the Christmas spirit. It's the holidays. Um, we're around people that we love and care about. That's what's most important. Family. 
Um, Kelly's in the Did studio, you drink of course. Both your beers already? She's drinking a Heineken now over there. You, Kelly, no one can see you. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, cheers to to the family, to Beyond Blood, to the to the you know loved ones that we've lost. Um, you know, obviously, you're, you're, we lost your mother this year, and and that's uh, we're gonna obviously Dorcas Rorick, R.I.P. Matt Boardman, we talked about. You know, Grammy Jan. Grammy Jan. Um, my my good friend Clint. All the struggles of that family were with you. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. Yeah, there's but there's been some losses, and uh, you know we can celebrate those with uh, the memories and the moments and experiences. And I'm glad you guys invite me on to have this show because it's Christmas time, and we're so thankful. We need to remember about. the funny stories and the good times, the bad times. You never know when it's yeah, gone. I know. You so. never know when your time's up. And uh, I'm just very very honored to be around this table yes. with uh, you know two of the most incredible people I ever met in my life. So and I love there's you guys. so many more of love us. Love you too. Cheers. And and Kelly and Kelly, Kelly cheers to you. There. Kelly's oh, yeah, you over can there. see her beer a little uh, bit. Uh, yeah, Kelly, Kelly's over there watching the TV, making sure we all look cool on TV. Yep, for sure. <laughs> Cheers. And, and salute, so, RIP. Yeah, so, yeah, going back to that story, because we segued a little bit into a nice cheers there. Boardman, man, he was a – I don't know how much we've talked about him on this show, but wild man. I mean, he was, you know, he came from the U.K., great friend, you know. He just wanted to have a good time. And, uh, man, there was some – there was some – Incredible stories and, and experiences. I kind of feel I, I kind of feel bad. I don't want I don't want to take this show on a downer. No, 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 no. Yeah, let's go I, there. I, I, like well, everyone, I mean, everyone should cry I mean, a little bit this no, holiday I'm, season. Oh, I'm not crying. I'm just saying. I am. No, well, it's because you got those beautiful. No, no, it's because they, it, they, 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 they flow like an ocean, Jamie. I, I know. Okay. There's like seagulls flying around those motherfuckers. But yeah, it's called what, salt. Oh. <laughs> I remember Matt. He he had some he had some issues. Of course, he did some bad things that we may not all agree with. And I feel like when he was when all that stuff happened with Matt, at least I did. I can't speak for you guys, but I feel like we kind of shut him out. And I remember him the night that he like you know supposedly killed him. I don't know what happened, but it, yeah, you know before he took he tried to call me and I knew the number and I didn't answer the phone because I was like. I don't want to hear Matt's bullshit. He did the That's same tough, man. Right. That's I, tough. I, I, I and then long, the next day, yeah, and then the next day we find out he, like, committed suicide. Yep. Whatever that means, whatever terminology, I still don't think he honestly shot himself. I think he shot himself on accident because that's just how Matt was. But yeah, they consider it suicide. So, I mean, what a so tough, that's gonna what hang a tough with me loss, forever. man. I, I, re- I regret not going to that funeral. I, yeah, I, regret I regret not going to that funeral. I was at that funeral, that. and it was uh, fucking waterworks. It was the first yeah. time I ever saw Mark Trimble cry. Um, it was just a, 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 a very not pleasant place to be. I feel that I was in a uh, place where I was still trying to you know, prove my point, whatever point that was. And i got to be honest with you, I wasn't going because I was ashamed because I blocked him off for months. Before all that, yeah, I, I, I didn't. I didn't know him for the last three years um, before that happened, and um, life is one of those things where, like, you kind of can look back and you you regret things, right? But it, it it's not too. You don't hold regret for long. You have to learn from that. Like, never again will I ever X. Yeah, you know, you, you, you don't you know, know what you, you learn until it's gone. You, you learn. Hmm. You know, yeah, I think it's it's just a good reminder. I mean, that that was a tough one for me, man. I, I had a tough time dealing with that. You remember how close Matt and I were? Um, yeah, you, know, you guys were close for a couple of years. Yeah, that was your guys' thing. Well, like, I mean, going back to race the, car races, yep, and exactly. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it'd be incredible to still have him with us. He he would be just be such a great supporter and, and a great guest. And I just remember the, the laugh. He had he had the such laugh. a unique laugh. He had such a great energy. Yeah, it was. You know, he was he was a beautiful human being. And you know, going back to the story Still you guys is. were talking about when I walked back in, you know, the, the New Year's night when he popped me in the mouth and honestly fucked up my my dental shit for, <laughs> for life was the reason him and I became so close. It was that night. All Matt wanted was a good dig on one of us because we were always digging on. Him. And every time he thought he had, he'd always go click click bang, you know. And we were like, <laughs> That's Matt, right, yeah. Matt, that wasn't good at all. It just wasn't good. Oh, but he was always go click click bang, you know. He always thought he had something good. He was a good man for sure. Yeah. He was a good man, of good intentions, and he just wanted to help everyone around him, and he did. He definitely did. Um, so R.I.P. Boardman for sure. But I mean, I, I feel like it's only fitting and. Uh, the universe led us to this type of close for this type of episode. Um, you know, it's the holiday season. 
And I'm feeling you, bro. I'm holding him back right now. I'm feeling you, dog. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I'm feeling you on that. But it, it's um, it's the time of the year where it's time to reflect, okay? And we don't have to just reflect about 2022. We can reflect about it all. And it's so important. Um, so I really encourage everybody out there that's listening to take five minutes and just really think about your life and like how it's went, how you can improve, and what we can do better to help everybody around us. Because regardless of who you are, we all care about somebody, right? I, I think I think everybody can improve somehow. I think we all have things that we're like kicking under the rug mm-hmm. that are tough. And yeah, I mean, it's like you said it perfectly. It's that time of the year where everything comes ahead you know you know it's a whole new year in a week a whole new year what yeah. are we gonna do different yeah and this is usually the time of year where people like to reflect on things they want to do differently moving forward and um you know it's always a, a good opportunity to hit the reset button of course and um you know new year's resolutions i don't really subscribe to a whole lot but i, I like the idea of changing the mindset so yeah i'm not talking about new year's resolutions i mean obviously that's just some somebody says in the state we're at right now i had too much drink and they're like, oh, next year is going to be different because I'm going to stop tying my shoes. Right. You know, it's an unrealistic view. You know, sorry, sorry, sorry. You're good, man. But you know, it's yeah. You got to do what's you got to do what's right. You know. And and it's not going to be easy. Okay. Like, look, when I'm crying through my sunglasses, I mean, my glasses on this shit, like. This shit's real. You're and crying? I never know. Yeah, no, like, and, and and that's what this is all about. This is what the 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 conversation exploding, aka discussion combustion, is all about. Is showing real real feelings, real real thoughts, real conversations, and bringing up real uh, conver- uh, subjects. Yep. Like this is not a joke. This is not a trial run. We are in the gauntlet right now. Like it's time right now to appreciate everything, to have the most, have the most happiness in your day, to feel humble about your mistakes. Like we all need to call ourselves out. Like let's start, let's stop calling other people out. Let's call ourselves out. Like if, if, if you want to sit here and judge other people and judge yourself first, like, and, and this is the time of the year we're about to crest into a, to 2023. It's about to go down and, and look, no time like the present. So as, as, as much as I could get emotional is I'll get hyped. And I'm super excited, Jamie, that you got to join us for the last episode of the year. No, we got one more. We got one more. You're good next week. Okay. But in my mind, it's a lifetime with you, bro, because I love you. You're one of my best friends. Dude. And, and you're amazing. I, I hate you guys up all the time. I feel like I always have shit to talk about, and there's never enough time to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to Kevin a week ago when he told me, he was like, I was like, dude, I got so much shit to talk about. And I'm trying to go through my brain right now, and I can't remember because we've we bounced off of so much stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't even think about what to talk about, you know. Well, the good news there is that there's always more to talk about in the future. Yeah, I mean, you know, and going back to Matt, I don't want to, you know, beat a dead horse. You know, my, my thing to say to Matt, you know, I don't feel good about not going to that. But yeah. I, did, I didn't know where I stood at that moment, you know, and yep. – it was a tough time. Yeah, it was a tough time. I felt Matt, you that know. Was a tough period. I felt like Matt was like, you know, I already knew you. I already knew you. I already knew Mark, you know. I always felt like Matt was like, you know, a guy in the back. And unfortunately, Matt felt like he was a guy in the back. And he was always trying to be a guy in the front. Yeah, that's true. You know, and. I mean, he could Tartek for you for a while. He did a lot of good things. Yeah. He was always trying to be, you yeah. know, kind of a, what can, what can I do to help? So, I mean, I guess I'd like to close this out as a an Odom, a respect to, to Matt Boardman, man. Yeah, I think, I, and I, yeah, obviously to Matt Boardman. You're how old is his kid now? I mean, he's one of the biggest support. Like, I have to say it just while we're on it before we jump to how old his kid is. Kids. But, like, he was kids. one. Kids. I didn't know he had kids. Did he have kids? No, he had, yeah, Cole was his kid. Cole. Yeah. Okay, so I was off there. But he was one of the biggest supporters Ever. Of everybody. Like, like, even when I was just rapping, like, I was rapping way back in the day, bro. He showed up, showed out, and and showed love. And, like, the heart of that man 
So will, that, will live forever with me, dog. Yeah, no, he loved everybody. He wanted everyone to yeah. succeed. I mean, that's just the character that he was and what he carried. And you know, yeah, it's it's, it's good to reflect on that because we're coming up on um, five years, six years since he's been gone. Yeah, which is incredible. It's hard to believe. We've lost Time a lot flies. of good ones. It does. We've lost a lot of good ones. And, I'll, and I'll, I also want to pay tribute to Dorcas Rorick. Of course, we lost her this year. I know it's a tough deal, Jamie. It is. Um, you know, we, we, we did talk about that during that time, and that's just a tough deal. Yeah. Yeah. Mom was my uh, best friend. I mean, I mean, I could talk to mom about anything, but, you know, I mean, we, I mean, it, that's going to be a whole other podcast. I mean, I don't, yeah. Have, yeah. I don't have enough time to even sit there and talk about because mom and I are a lot alike, and, Mom was never uh, I love you or anything. She was very straightforward, and she was yes and no. Yeah. And, Beautiful uh, woman. Yeah, she was. She really was. I mean, we, got, we, got, we have to celebrate life. Absolutely. Because yeah. all of us are going to go one day. Yep. Yeah. You like, never know when it's We're up. all going to go. Like, this, this is temporary, and that's what makes it so beautiful. It's true. Yeah, it's true. You really got to enjoy everybody and, and, and everyone around you in the moments, memories, experiences, because you never know when it's up. I mean, things can come at you quick. You know, life changes fast, and tomorrow's not promised. Tomorrow's not promised. I mean, if you guys want to focus on me. It's Everything. On Is it on me right now? We on you, baby. Uh, since July, my life has totally fucking changed. The, the family's in disarray, you know. My mom was a, like, uh, what, what's the good word? A matriarch. You know, she kept everything in place. You know, if I, had a, if I had a problem with work, if I had a problem with, you know, putting jokes, AD or, you know, anything, I could call my mom and she's like, you're fucking old, so your dick don't work. You know, I mean, that's the kind of person she was. Very straightforward. Yeah, I mean. Um, I remember her giving me a hard time. When, yeah. When, you know, the first couple of few Thanksgivings I spent around, you know, I was like, you know, I don't know. You and my son, you, you, I don't know. Yeah. You guys drink too much and you do too much of this and yeah. that. She was a straight shooter. Well, she didn't drink a lot. She was, uh, she liked to drink. What were those things? Chocolate wine. She loved her chocolate wine. On occasion. Yes. Well, on holidays, she didn't drink. No. Your mom My wasn't mom drinking. never drank except on holidays. But, yes, we all miss mom. Of course. My brother, you, you're dear friends with my brothers, you know, my whole family. Yeah, I love Frank, love Damon. Yeah. Tremendous. I mean, I mean, we all miss mom. It's just, you know. Yeah. I think, I think, I, I, there's nobody more shocked than me. Kelly and I were on fucking vacation, and yeah. mom was going in for a checkup. That was and, a hell of a week for you. Yeah. That, that's just and how it goes, though, man. When you have your kid calling, you go, hey, you know, grandma's not going to make it out of surgery. And you're like, what? She just went in for a checkup. Yeah, it's it, it's a tough thing. It just it, When it's so unexpected like that, I mean, I remember getting the call from Damon. We were at Mike Patchen's 40th birthday. Yeah. And just hearing the, you know, Damon is always a happy. Oh, yeah. Every Dam- time Damon, Damon doesn't show any kind of emotion. Absolutely not. And and when I picked up the phone that night when we were driving back from Mike's party, because you, know, you were there driving, I knew something was terribly wrong. You know, and I had to pick him up from the airport the next day. Cause that's so, what that's what we do. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, honestly, like we we could keep going down this list, but I, I feel like the best thing for us to do, especially for all you tuning in, and thank you so much for sticking with us, is we need to just pay respect and an homage to everyone who, but you know, who has you, lost somebody. Yeah. Yep. You know, you know what's even better than that is my daughter. I'm going to be a grandpa this year. That's super exciting. Man. In so, February 23. So Grammy Jam and Grammy Dorcas, there's a little girl coming to honor their names. You know? That's terrific. And, you know, here I thought I could never set up a Christmas tree ever again. And, you know, this happens. So. Well, let's cheers to that, man. Yeah. So all of a sudden there's a... It always comes back. There's always new life. Leave it to Sam to fuck all the fucking freedom up. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. All roads lead back to family and friends. Family and friends make you the richest man. Jamie, that's a, a lyric that we talk about in there Going Home go. with the yeah. Ridge Runners. Beyond Blood, we have that on our arms, of course. Art's going to get that at some point in time. Yeah, when does that happen, Art? When when I get the tattoo. That's a great answer. That's an amazing answer. So <laughs> next year or the year after? or I like to remain a man of mystery. 
It's those eyes. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. But I mean, on that note, look. So far, I mean, we could, this could turn into a Joe Rogan experience. We could be here three, four hours just talking about stuff because we all love each other. We know each other. We're going to keep it going after these, after the mics turn off. Well, of course off. we are. I mean, we're a family right now. But yeah, I mean, you know, when we talked about, I mean, everyone that falls on social, we talked about, hey, we're going to do a solo for Christmas. But then Jamie's like, well, I want on. Jamie always gets on. So anytime you want to come on this program, you know, you take priority. And I'm totally honored, and I appreciate it because I respect you guys, and I love coming on here. I love talking about the old stories. It's fun. You know, I'm sorry that the the, the back part of it that sounded sad, but it's real. Though. No, this I, is I, important. I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure we could come up with some jokes to make it. Look, look, funny. honestly, I, mean, I I hope for all the listeners out there. I hope you cried with us tonight because that means something. Like when we express ourselves like like this, and we put it on the fucking line. I put it on the line. Like, I, I don't care who you are, what Arthur, you do. I'm pretty sure when they see those big blue yeah, eyes no, cry, there's... We put it on the line, though, Jamie. I'm pretty sure there was, like, mops and buckets. No, don't you try to derail this. Be- <laughs> because we put it on the line here, and it's it's super important. Like, and I need, to, I need to talk into the camera just for a second. Like, allow yourself to feel the emotions that are flooding into you, regardless if it's happy, it's sad, you're pissed off. You're fucking angry. You're upset. Whatever it is, allow those emotions to flow. You have to go through this river of emotion in order to feed the ocean of belief. And, like, whatever you put into that river will feed the ocean. And it's so important. So I expose myself on this podcast because it's important to me. I became sober off this podcast. This podcast has changed my life in so many ways. I can't. I can't even express, and I appreciate you, Kevin. I love you, Jamie. Yeah, I'm but gonna, I mean, I'm gonna lose it right now. Arthur, <laughs> Arthur we've all you. noticed it. Everything yeah. you just said, we've all noticed it. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we make the jokes about the beautiful blue eyes and all that stuff. I You're the, the only one, Jamie. I know, I know, but I remember. <laughs> I remember those beautiful blue eyes being covered up halfway every time I saw you because oh, yeah. you were in a bad place. So I mean. I mean, we we can do that. Like like he said, mm. we can do this for hours. We can sit here and patronize ourselves all fucking night long. Mm. But we were supposed to have a fun podcast. We did. You know, it got. I mean, it's it got, important. It got real, yeah. of course. I mean, it's the holiday yeah. spirit, of course. And, you know, sometimes I, I don't. I, I don't know. It's you know? important, Jamie. I, I know. I got a beautiful girlfriend and scrubs sitting right to right of me. I just want to get out of here so I can try and get her naked. Well, and that's why we're going to go ahead and <laughs> shut this podcast down. Uh, of course, but you know, again, to close on on a note that is uh, very, you know, real is um, yeah, that's what we do. Look, it's Christmas time, guys. So as you're tuning in, I hope everyone is enjoying their time with their families because family and friends do make. Oh, wait, what, what's the life thing? You didn't ask about the life. The life. You always had that one thing. You always asked me where I struggled with. No, like, you've answered this question. So all right. we can do it again. Uh, all right, we can do it right. quick. I right, do it, Jamie. Do it. Jamie. So if you could offer one piece of advice. If you could offer one actually, piece of advice, we'll hand it off. If you could a- offer one piece of advice that would better humanity tomorrow, what would that advice be? I tried to think about this today. I was prepared for this. What about the life he says? Yeah. <laughs> I was prepared for this today. What is it? What is it? I'm thinking. I want to word it right. So, um, what makes I am. I don't know what I should say. I don't, are you guys good with whatever I say? Of course. It's a discussion combustion podcast. We send. I think life needs to slow down a little bit, at least in Colorado. With the whole politics and everything else, this whole thing with, like, the gender thing and everybody being sensitive, and I've said this before, I think people need to get out of their circles a little bit and – look at us as, as a whole but i i really think things are getting out of control i really think things are happening without any thought process i think people are doing stuff now to just do it to get the reaction to get the attention and i think that's sad acting on emotion exactly than, yeah than- no logic yeah i don't i don't think there's as much out there as that the media is putting out there to be i think since the media is put out i think there's just too much and i think people are reacting because 
it's makes a reaction. No, I, I see where you're going with this, and it's it's the live and let live policy. Yeah. Like, look, um, the only critic – everybody has the right to be a critic, but the only person that you're allowed to be a critic to is yourself, all right? And so if you want to sit here and start judging anybody else's life, you want to sit here and start – slandering how people are making their decisions back off bucko because here's the thing is you only can judge yourself the strength that i've created right here is because i fucking put on my armor and fight myself we fight ourselves so i'm gonna agree with what you're saying it's too much there's there's too much of this out here there's too much of this play into modern politics of gender whatever it is i feel like everybody just needs to dial it back and and really fight that inner battle with yourself that's where the war is won that's where the battle is currently happening i really think there's too much talk about it and when there's i mean we all know if arthur you can sit back all night long go I'm going to get sick I'm going to get sick I'm going to get sick I never gonna say sick. that shit to myself well, no I'm, j- I'm using it for an example I'm going to get sick I'm going to get sick I'm going to but I don't say that Jamie Kevin you're going to sit back one night no gonna... I, I'm saying I'm, I'm going to be healthy I am healthy I'm strong I'm, healthy. I, I'm using it for I an example this. I'm using it for an example if a person sits there and says I'm going to be sick I'm going to be sick I'm going to be sick I'm gonna... they're, they're going to be sick they're going to be sick yes that's, well, I mean, that brings it back to affirmations. Yeah. When you tell yourself something, what, what you tell your body, your body will tend to believe. Right. right? So what is, at what point in your life do you stop telling yourself that when you actually start believing what you're telling yourself? At what age? I mean, it's obviously different for everybody. Right. Right. I mean, because I think a lot of folks are in that uh, complacent mindset of, oh, well, I'm going to get sick. I'm going to get it. I got to get 47 boosters, right? All that kind of stuff. And guess what? In the no, real. I'm, I'm talking about the whole, like, the whole cha- uh, transgender thing. At what age can you come out of that where, like, okay, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. So, so I mean, that, where, that, that's a box of worms, Jamie. I mean, th- that's a whole other podcast upon itself. Um to summarize it, I, I've spoke with people who have worked with people that for over 30 years on that subject. And basically the consensus is that it's the worst it's ever been right now. Well, of course it is. And, yeah. and, and what I have to say to anybody who is in conflict with their identity is dig deep. Don't listen to others. Listen to yourself. And it's not the time. Just listen to yourself. Everything happens in time. They're trying to force too much at one time. Everything happens at, look at like uh, segregation. It all like filtered in little by little by little. These, I mean, all these other groups want shit to happen like right now. So they're flooding people. And that's where the controversy if it would just happen little by little by little by little by little. But they want everything, like, right fucking now. And you're talking about a whole country trying to, like, change the way they've believed for hundreds of years. I'm not saying they're right. I'm wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying it. I'm just saying that, I mean, that nothing happens overnight. Yeah. I mean, I, I could totally go off on all that. I mean, but what's important right now is just recognizing the spirit of doing the right thing for the right reason even if it's the hard thing to do and how many people got offended tonight because i showed a a snowman with the boner are you concerned about that no so should you should you be concerned about what i just said no no it's the same thing though it's exactly the same fucking Thing. Well, that's what's great about what we do in, in, in the podcast industry is we, you know, it's a platform to say what we want to say, right? People could tell us to fuck off. They might not like us, you know, whatever. But the fact remains we're having real conversations about things that make people uncomfortable at times. 
We have conversations about things that make people feel great and warm and fuzzy inside. You know, it's it's all around. We have to be having these conversations 100% all around, you know, all topics. I don't think anything's off limits, so to speak. You know, and I think we have gotten a little bit away from that, Jamie, to your point, and, and focused a little bit on um, coddling some of these wild agendas. I agree. Right. Well, and, and, and here's the thing, too, is we're all four to six deep minimum way above that limit oh, I'm way, so I'm so way farther so what i want to say to to close this one out for the christmas special Do is eight? is jamie rorick i'm so happy <laughs> that you are here i'm so happy that you have been a part of my life i know that you've been a big part of kevin's life as well and we wouldn't be the people that we are if it wasn't for you and, I th- I and think kevin that, while I, i'm on it no i have to continue and kevin if it wasn't for you I wouldn't be the man that I am now if it wasn't for you, bro. Thanks, man. And so the two men that I'm sharing this table with right now, having an honest conversation with, um, it means a lot to me. And, I, and so, like, that's the feeling's what, what, what I want to rock on with as far as this this whole holiday season and, 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 like, keeping the jolly flows moving. I love you guys so much. The two Not, of you. Nothing means more to me than to see you guys be successful. I mean – you guys are fucking killing. You guys are like literally, I mean, you guys are like this far from me and like local rock stars. Not in my world. I'm that. I mean. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Kevin, close, close the south strong, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Look, it's, it's family and friends make you the richest man. Yes. It, it's something that we wrote a long time ago. It's something I believe in. There's a reason I carry this tattoo that I've shown probably 20 times on this fucking podcast. Jamie's got it right there. You can see we shared the same thing. Family and friends will make you the richest man, woman, or whatever the hell you identify as. The fact remains, surround yourself with great people because there's great people out there that do care about you and great, you know, friendships, moments, memories, experiences to be had, you know. So don't overthink it. Enjoy this holiday season. Enjoy your family. Doesn't need to be roughed up. Doesn't need to be, you know, negative. Doesn't need to be political. Um, And if it gets to that point, just know, hey, we love and respect everybody. And so on that note, I want to close this thing out. Jamie, I really love you, brother. And I Merry appreciate Christmas. you being here uh, again. I love you guys. You've been on the show many, many, too, many man. times. And you'll be back many, many more times, no matter what happens. I mean, we're all in this together, man. We started this thing in your basement. No, you didn't. Uh, yeah, we did. You started in a living room on phones. I mean, that technically, He's right. He's technically right. we did start it there. Yeah, you lied to our whole listening I didn't lie. Audience. You, 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 uh, decept, you, you're deceptive. Look, <laughs> I appreciate it. We all know we're talking about, um, you know, you guys would have made it successful no matter where you are at. Doug, if you say I that appreciate one more it. fucking time, no, you can't keep saying the same fucking shit every single time, How Jamie. How do you guys close this shit out? We're, we're getting there. Yeah, well, I mean. we, we, we close it out with be good to yourselves. Well, of course you deserve it. And Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Merry Happy Christmas, Hanukkah, guys. Happy Kwanzaa, whatever holiday you yeah. celebrate. Jamie, what you got? Merry Christmas. I love you guys. We'll see you soon. Drink whiskey. Love it. <laughs> <laughs>